So what is the Student Success Plan? The Student Success Plan is a software and a set of processes, or it supports a set of processes that are really designed to help with student persistence, success, graduation rates, completion. It's a, it's a cohesive and holistic system uh, trying to tie lots of different areas around the college together so that we can support uh, the students that have been identified as having challenges or to help other folks uh, move their students to the highest heights they can get. So you can use it at at-risk students, student athletes, uh, honor students, whoever you might want to target and provide additional more intensive support services to. It includes a case management software, which we're going to look at today, the early alert so that we can identify and bring services to bear for a student. It has a student interface that's coming soon. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. It does link into the student information system, and we have had successful integrations and been able to, to provide that service. And one of the most important things about this is that we're starting to collect data and understand what we do, how does it work, and does it have the impact we want. We're trying to really move beyond anecdote and get to data-driven decision-making to know that the interventions that we deploy with our students actually have the impacts we think they should. So why would you want to spend an afternoon with Russ and, and listen to this? And uh, what, what do people want to get out of this? Typically, it's retention and success, graduation rates, the ability to create a, a comprehensive counseling model or an advising model uh, to create process and to manage many different processes in the same tool to help break down those silos, have early alerts to be able to bring support to bear for students that may be struggling or at risk, and ultimately to create some self-help tools for the students. And we'll talk about that a little bit. That's coming in a release in, in the very near future. So does it work? You know, I mean, it's, it's one thing to say all these things. I think we probably all want those kinds of solutions. But can we say that it actually does something? In my experience here at Sinclair over the last 10 years, we can say we have longitudinal data to say that students are more likely to complete their courses successfully, have higher GPAs, um, much higher success rates, much more likely to come back and are more likely to graduate. So here me give you some example outcomes. Now before I say this, I want to be careful to say that technology isn't the magic. The people are the magic, but technology is enabling. So the student success plan is just a tool, but given to the right people and the student success professionals and advisors and coaches and counselors, it's a powerful set of tools to allow them to have a, a great impact on students, to measure what works and to modify their processes over time to great even better outcomes. So in our targeted population, what we call pathways to completion, these are going to be first time in college at risk. Typically, they're academically unprepared or in poverty. And we are seeing 37% higher rates of retention for that targeted at risk group and 26% higher rates of retention than our not at risk group. We also see much higher rates of uh, first term success. And the thing that gets me out of bed in the morning and, and makes me want to keep doing this after 10 years is that we're seeing five times uh, the likelihood that these students will graduate. And, and for me, this just makes my heart sing. This is, this is what I'm in business to do at a community college, and this is what it's all about. And we have the data to show that it does actually work and has these kinds of impacts. Now, we're trying to scale up and impact more and more students across the entire uh, organization and not just our target populations. But we feel really good that we have a strong foundation and a set of tools to work on to make that happen. So we originally set out to do this 10 years ago. Why did, why did Sinclair get in this business? What's a community college doing building software? And at the time, we knew that we had a real problem around retention. And at that point, we hadn't started talking about success and completion yet. And we knew that retention was a real challenge, and we didn't have any way to deal with it. And so we started talking and, and the student services folks and I were talking and we thought, you know, we really need to collaborate and get all these different groups to be able to see the same data and to talk to one another and create a holistic coaching model. And with that came the need for technology and thus the SSP was born. But we looked around at the time and there just really wasn't any technology and so we started building the system. We had no idea that other people would want it <laughs> or that someday we might be sharing it with other colleges. So we didn't build it with that in mind to start with. And many years ago, we started replatforming and making it available to other schools under a commercial license. And since then, we have decided that open source is really the best option for us. And we'd like to share it with the community and give it away at zero cost. 
So you can see the kind of populations we're here. The, the thing to take away is that any population can be case managed. And I'll show you how we can target those students, tag them, and report on them later. So uh, Connect has cut off a little bit of my slide on the left there. But the system is really made up of a case management software, which includes a journal, action plans, the ability to look at the student history. Uh, there will be specific counseling tools coming, disability displaced worker, et cetera, right at the end of this year. Uh, it has the early alert to connect your faculty and staff to the support tools that students need and to be able to search their roster, identify a student, and then uh, bring services to bear. One of the most important things about the early alert is that it has a feedback loop to make sure that those who sent the early alert are engaged, and we encourage them to continue to do that. When we talked to faculty, they said that when they felt like the early alert process was a black hole, I submitted something to student services, and I have no idea if it helped, that faculty de-engaged, that they didn't want to do that, and they didn't want to uh, continue to participate. So we have found that feedback loop to be instrumental in getting their engagement numbers up, and now our early alerts are to the point where we, we almost don't have the staff to deal with them. They want to help students so much, and, and that's really important, uh, and making sure that that early alert interface is simple so that you can engage your adjuncts and part-timers uh, has to be pretty easy. The student interface, which will be coming soon, like I said, toward the end of the year, we have it enabled here at Sinclair, and we're just uh, knocking off the edges for the open source version, and it will bolt right onto the one that's here now, so you can go ahead and get started, and this will be available. It includes a remote web-based student intake, self-help guides, ability for students to see their action plans, and connect to their coach directly from the web. Of course, it also has that link back to your student information system so that we can go ahead and make those uh, rosters for early alert, and then later be able to pull some of that data together for reporting. So how do we use this SSP process? Well, we identify students, and we have about a dozen distinct groups here at Sinclair that we support. So we use diagnostic tools, predictive models, demographics, uh, items, and then we put them through our student intake, and then we decide who they are. So we have those pathway to completion students I mentioned, first time in college, at risk. So they get a completely uh, specialized set of services, and coaches and whatnot, and then we have just regular first-year advising center students, so they're not at risk. They get a different set of services. We have disability students. We have distance learning students. We have pre-high school or pre-college high school students. You get the idea, and then we, we identify them, and then we start providing them services based on their grouping, and we use tools like the journal, the action plans, and the early alert to be able to support them, uh, and then the student self-help tools for them to support themselves. So our pathways to completion model, which is the one that I have the data for, so that's what I'll focus on, is that we really believe in a preventative and a proactive uh, approach. So that is an intrusive coaching model. We reach out to those students the day they show up on our campus and take the placement test. We identify that they're at risk, and we start providing them services right away. The early alert is more of a safety net, that they get into the classroom, and, and the faculty have the most time with the student. They are our boots on the ground, and they can see that a student might be struggling. And they can identify that and let us know. And then hopefully we can uh, provide the support services and the safety for that student to make sure they are successful. We do really believe that they should always get accurate information. Uh, that's one of the reasons to use the kind of these kinds of tools in case management and to break down silos. It's very frustrating for a student to go from department to department on campus and only to hear conflicting data and get different stories in different places. Uh, and they really don't feel like the college knows what it's doing. So we want them to feel like it's consistent and that they're getting the appropriate referrals. Again, we want to make sure that all of our coaches have access to the best information about what we can refer and what those referrals could be. Uh, and we want them as they go from office to office for each one of us to know about that student and help know what, uh, how to propel that student forward. So we, we can understand what their plan is and how we can help them achieve their goal. We want to have a consistent relationship. We don't want them to have to tell their story over and over and over in every office they visit. And most importantly to us, we want them to know they matter. Sinclair is about a 25,000 student school. And so in some ways, it feels like a giant faceless bureaucracy. And we want these students uh, to realize that we really do care about them. And we really are trying very hard to make them successful. So Pathways to Completion is really that new degree-seeking student. Uh, I already talked about this being at, at or below the poverty level, uh, undecided or academically unprepared. They're below the 100 level in reading, math, English, etc. So 
how would we work with a student like that? There's a case management system, and these are some screenshots I'll go through quick, and then we'll go into a live demo, but just to lay the foundation of what we're going to do. We can see the students we're working with. You can see they're color-coded at the top of the students that have an early alert. So at this point, I'm a coach or a counselor or an advisor working with the system, and I've logged in, and these are my students. And at the top, I can see the ones that need immediate assistance. They're color-coded differently. And I can see all my other students. I can see what kind of student they are, pre-college, transfer, early alert, continuing, returning. Uh, and immediately then I can drill down and see some information about that student. And so as I drill down, I can see who that student's coach is. I can see their special service groups, their referral sources, the reasons they're receiving service. I can look at their action plan, their journal, and any other early alerts that they've received over time. So a journal entry, this is case management 101, you know, electronic records keeping. And we've tried to do this in a way that makes things easier for the coaches. Many coaches will feel like, oh gosh, you know, doing electronic record keeping will just take more time. I won't be able to spend time with the students. And that's actually the reverse. And in our uh, situation here, our coaches would, would feel lost without it. And they really feel like this speeds things up for them. And we'll talk about journal tracks and sessions in, in a little bit when we do the demo and how we've used this to create what we call speed notes. So to create a journal entry, we simply select journal, we select add, we get a, a reason down here, we follow the arrow down to the first box on the right. We have confidentiality level. This is how we can put disability, counseling services, academic advising, faculty advising, RAs, et cetera, all in the same system. We have very controlled confidentiality levels about the data in the system. The idea is for each person who uses it to have the broadest view of the student that they have a need to know, but without having to go to different tools or different silos to get that, that information. So we would set the confidentiality level, we could set a source, we can make our comment, uh, then we can have journal tracks and session details. And these are pre-populated, pre-filled places so that we don't have to write all these notes by hand. So as we go through the session details, you can see out to the, to the left there, under the counseling process, the disclosure session, the intake, and we can just quickly check off the items that we want to include that we did in this session instead of having to type those in each time. There are a lot of advantages to this other than just speed because of the reporting we can do on the back end. And we can understand where students are at within specific processes and how far they've progressed through any defined process you have. One of the things we'll talk about in a little bit is the system is highly configurable so that you can use it for your own processes and you can define your own groups and your own systems and then be able to measure against your own metrics. So once we've created a journal, we have the ability to look back at a counseling history, and this is the one that's been formatted for Sinclair. You can do some lightweight formatting for your institution. Uh, and you can see that the notes are captured there, who entered it, who's allowed to see it, uh, what session it came from. So this one was for Pathways to Completion, session number two, and that they talked about self, situation, support, and strategies. They developed an action plan. They created an appointment. They talked about financial aid, and then they talked about Patrick and, and did some discovery here that's in the notes. A lot of times they're not any handwritten notes. It's just the, we created an action plan, went over learning outcomes, those kinds of things. Uh, so the next coach knows what happened with that student. So an action plan item. So this is really where the rubber hits the road. And the action plan is my favorite thing in the whole system. We have identified that a student has a challenge. They're sitting in our office and they're like, I just really, I'm, Math tests scare the crap out of me. I don't know what to do. Or my car is broken down and I can't get to class on Tuesday, so I, I might just have to drop. So what are we going to do about that? The now what? We have identified the student is at risk. Now what? And the action plan is, a, is an answer to the now what. So that we can go through and identify items and then look through the reference guide. Now think of this as a giant knowledge base of the collected wisdom of all of your coaches and counselors and advisors that have come up with great solutions to specific student challenges. In this case, I've got test anxiety highlighted out there on the right, and then a study skills website, including all the information that was pre-populated so that the coach doesn't have to have uh, a Rolodex of all of these or a hundred little tabs on the phone book or a list of bookmarks or go to Google and then write this stuff down on a, a post-it note that the student will then lose. They can also then begin setting some expectations we have said that this is a potential way for you to deal with test anxiety. 
I'm starting to build out those items for them in a plan and then set expectations on when they will accomplish them and also creating a plan that we can jointly track together. And then as they meet with any other coach or advisor or counselor in the system that has the right to see this, they will also be able to help propel that student forward and say, okay, how are you doing with uh, getting your uh, job at Davest or transferring money from your Pell Grant or using that study skills website? Did that help you any with your math anxiety? If not, let's do something else. If so, that's great. But we can at least understand what the challenge was, develop a, a specific plan of action, and then track the student's progress on that plan of action. And then later we can say, for the students that we made specific referrals, how successful were they? How did they do? Do we know that these things are actually impacting our students in a positive way? The action plan can be printed out. It's also emailed to the student. At the end of December, it will be available in the student self-help interface where they can see, we remind them of their goals, their strengths, and then we go through the specific steps that they've been assigned. And they get this in kind of a checkoff format. We typically sign it and have them sign it when we're doing in-person things. Obviously, when we're doing distance learning coaching, that doesn't work. But uh, it, that's not really um, technology. That's just a process thing. And people that sign a piece of paper feel more connected and um, accountable for their own success. And so we use that as part of our process. So the early alert, this might be how we identify that a student has a challenge. So the screen at the top is, is really the faculty screen, and we've tried to make this extremely simple. You can see there's a little drop-down box, and in that is a list of all the courses they're teaching. They pick their course, they get a roster. They simply pick the student, in this case, Savannah, and when they select Savannah, down here on the right, if we follow the arrow, we see that we get some reasons, uh, referral reason. In this case, we selected never attended. Then the faculty member can make some suggestions. You can see the little box out there to the left and let us know what they think might need to happen. Now, when we hit send early alert, a couple things are going to happen. They are going to have an email go automatically to the student's coach. If a coach is not already identified, it's going to go to an early alert coordinator who will then triage it and assign it appropriately. They're going to get the opportunity to let the student know about this alert, um, and they're going to get a copy for their own records as a faculty member. So we've tried to make this a really simplistic process so that we can send them an email with a few screenshots in it and that they can be able to uh, figure that out pretty simply. So the student interface, which is coming soon, uh, it, it's not there today, but it will be there soon enough that anybody starting the implementation cycle today would probably have it. Um, it is, contains the, that action plan out there on the right-hand side for the student to see it from a web interface so they've got it in his email, they've got it in paper, and now they can get to it on the web. We're also working on being able to put that into a portlet and mobile so they can get to it straight through our, our student portal interface. You can see on the left here, we've got some student self-help guides so they can go through and say, answer some questions. And this becomes very tactical and it's configurable. It's not something you're gonna need to rely on IT to set up, but they can answer some simple questions, things like, do I need to uh, apply for financial aid, yes or no? Do I need help with transportation, yes or no? And based on those answers, it would present to them the potential solutions to their challenge. And they can go through and create their own guide. We actually teach this in our Student Success 101 class, so students can use it and learn to fish, kind of, um, and figure out where they can go for resources in the future. And we're starting to build this all into our portal so that that we can have the students learn that this is the one place where we're going to tell them what they need to do. So for example, Sinclair, you had talked about being able to uh, do these things dynamically from an external system. We're going to inject all of our enrollment steps. Please attend orientation, get a student ID card, fill out the FAFSA, and we'll be able to control those through the API from our student information system so that the student sees, here are the things you need to do to be successful, and that our system can control those and that our coaches can see if they've completed those steps or not, and also things that they and the coaches have worked on together, as well as things the student has done on their own. So Rob, you had asked if the referral reasons are customizable, and what are the standard ones? Uh, the standard ones are the ones that I have available from Sinclair as an example. They are most certainly customizable, and you can go through and make them anything you want them to be. There's typically a process at each institution that implements this, to take the existing referral guide and use it as a template to then build out their own. 
in your first year of implementation, you will probably see your guide grow dramatically. We will give you the framework we have, um, and then you will put in what you know about then. And then as people come up with like, wow, I had a student with a child that had special needs, and I went out and did this, this, and this, and I found these four great resources. And instead of losing that, we're going to put it into the guide, and every coach therefore is going to be able to have access to that and to be able to offer that as a solution to the student. And then you get the decision to decide if it is going to be available to them as a self-help resource or not. So how long did it take us to build our reference guide? The original guide took a few weeks because it turns out everybody has all these referrals. They're just in different coaches' heads and advisors and counselors. They've got them in phone books. They've got them in uh, bookmarks. They've got them all over the place. And so what we did is took kind of a spreadsheet. And it actually took longer to get them all in a, a room and to agree on what those things should be than it does to actually put them in the system. The interface to create those in the technology is very clean and simple. And here at Sinclair, it is managed by an administrative assistant in student services. So talking about data, data is one of the most exciting things about this. I think for years, we have had anecdotal thoughts about what we think impacts student success and what's going on with them and how to in, and do something about it. And when you start measuring things, you find out that some of those anecdotes were dead on the money and some of them are way off base. So the number two challenge that our students have self-identified through this process is test anxiety, the number one being finances. So we knew test anxiety was a, a real problem, but we didn't know it was the number two problem. And then based on that data, we were able to go back and change some of our programming, our orientation, our student success course, the number of workshops we offered to try to address that challenge that we knew our students now faced. The reporting interface is done through another open source tool called Jasper Reports. It's completely open and extensible. You can modify it all you want. And of course, the database is open. So if you have your own analytic tools and you would want to attach the data, you're more than welcome to do so. So it is open source. Yes, we will give you the software, really. Um, it is available now. So out on the JSID website and the repositories, you can download uh, the tool and set it up. It is free like a puppy, <laughs> and with any puppy, you're going to have to take care of it and feed it and walk it and groom it, and Sinclair can't help you do those things. We are contributing the software, but we are not a sales support organization, and we can't answer support tickets. We will collaborate. We will be your partner, but we can't be your vendor. So that is where uh, Unicon comes into the picture and other commercial vendors to be able to help implement the open source. and train the dog, walk the dog, groom the dog, and help you take care of it. We're going to quickly go through kind of a technology stack. The presentation tier is in HTML5, um, and it's pretty standards-based. The logic tier is all in Java using Spring and Hibernate, and very standards, and very aligned with the uPortal project uh, to try to make this simpler for the open source community to implement. The data tier works in Postgres or MS SQL. And we version everything in a tool called Liquibase to try to make the, the process simpler for those that are implementing or might want to do a little customization on their own campus that's different from the, the core tree. Uh, it has integration in the form of an API that's documented uh, through the tools within new platform, we'll get to in a second, and through an SIS data integration, which is a series of tables that are defined so that we can communicate with your student information system. So the whole thing runs on top of what we call new platform. So SSP, our, our core skill set was around helping students, not around things like student sign-on and uh, identity management and uh, those kinds of things. So we leveraged the open source community's U portal, and we took the, the parts of it that we really needed underneath the plumbing and the infrastructure, the part we call U platform, and we built SSP on top of that. So that gives us this platform to work with from the starting point that's years mature, is really robust and already has a ton of resources invested in it. And then we have leveraged that and tried to use what our, our competency is, which is around student success and support, and build those tools specifically in that technology stack. This really allows us to leverage out to that uh, uPortal community. But more than anything, it gave us a solid, stable base to start from and really allowed us to do this replatforming much faster. So we're looking for open source partners. We would really love to have people participate. Uh, we want people that are going to be collaborative, that, that want to look at data, that want to learn, that want to adapt. This isn't the kind of thing that you just install and it's perfect from day one because you're going to learn that your processes and your culture 
are more important than the technology, but the technology allows you to really look and refine those things. I've been at this a while. This isn't something that's just uh, popped up yesterday. Uh, like I said, I've been with the project for 10 years. We have uh, numerous national awards, so it's not just Russ that thinks it's cool. Lots of other folks have taken a look at it and validated that it, it does what it says it does and that it does have value. Uh, a number of colleges have already implemented, including St. Petersburg College, which uh, Spencer mentioned at the beginning, which is the most recent school to go through a full implementation. We have several others in the pending stage right now and beginning that process. Um, I think probably one of the things that I like about this, again, it's measurable. We can, we can create a plan of action and we can know if our students are, are working toward it and are we helping them. So what do you get out of it? Well, there's no software cost. So like Spencer said, you could do this completely on your own, or you can do it anywhere between having Unicon do everything for you to having Unicon assist you just a little bit or do it all on your own. But the idea is that you have the choice. You have the control and the power in that relationship instead of like a Blackboard or a, uh, another commercial vendor where you, know, you buy in and you're really stuck with that commercial license because it's proprietary. And with the open source, you, you get the choice. You can say, mm, this year, wow, we're going to go it on our own, and next year, maybe I need a little support, or vice versa. This year, man, I really need support. Next year, you could say, well, I don't. The power, though, is with you and being able to, to bend the software to your specific need and buy as little or as much as you need. So we have Unicon as a partner, and we are tickled pink about that. They are a fantastic organization with a great track record and well-loved within the uh, JSIG and Sakai communities and, and respected for a lot of reasons. And, and so we're glad that, that they were able to partner with us. We we're also really pleased to be part of JSIG. There was no reason to recreate the wheel. There's a great nonprofit already there. And that way, uh, if Russ gets hit by a bus or Sinclair decides it's going to do something different, it isn't, but <laughs> if it did, the project will go on. We are really looking forward to community governance, resource sharing, and benchmarking, particularly that benchmarking so that we can start sharing apples to pears instead of apples to zebras with our student success data. So here's a smattering of the awards. I think the main thing I'm most proud about this list is not the specific awards, but that after eight years, we're still getting them. And I think that means that the system is relevant and there's a real need out there and that we've been able to really help some people and, and, and recognize that. So what's next? Um, I wish I could share it with you today, but I'm under embargo. But I'll have a major announcement at Educause uh, about the future of the Student Success Plan. Um, I think you'll be pleased. We're going to see more support and uh, more expansion and, and growth. Uh, the January 1st update, the update uh, that will uh, add in a few more features, the Student Success Tool, the Self-Help Tool, will be coming out at the end of December, early January. And uh, that is already in the books and, and being done right now. May 1st, we're going to see a major renovation and probably a 2.0 kind of moniker as we add the MAP, or My Academic Plan, which is a student advising tool that we've been using here at Sinclair for about the last 18 months. And we now have formal permission to bake that in as part of SSP and also give it away as open source. We expect to have that fully done and implemented here uh, and at other schools. We have seven partners that have committed to doing that implementation for September 1st um, of 13, and we know that we'll need to be in production at that time. So on the horizon, we intend to do more integration with the platform uh, and the portal. We have some uh, plans to do self-scheduling, and we've got another open source project in JSIG from the University of Wisconsin-Madison called Schedule Assistant to help us with that. We are working actively with both OAI, which is the Open Analytics Initiative, and PAR, Predictive Analytics and Reporting. We are a member of that grant. I'm the project investigator for that as well, principal investigator. And those are ways that we can identify students, and then, as we talked about before, be able to use that identification through the uh, API and have an early alert generated based on data that has been used through a predictive model. So we would really love it if everybody on the call would adopt the software today. <laughs> I realize that's unrealistic, but that's what I would love. Um, we really want to collaborate. Uh, we would love to have folks that are interested in becoming code contributors and working with us to, to uh, bend software to their need, and hopefully those needs can be contributed back to the community and we can all share on them. We're still looking for steering committee members. Um, and evangelists. We would love for folks to say, hey, this SSP thing's pretty cool. You should, you should go see that. 
So with that said, I'm going to drop out of this and, and pop over into the tool itself. So what I have pulled up here is an actual live version of the system. You can see the color coding. This is my case management screen. These are my students at the top here who have open early alerts. Uh, as I just select student records, you can see it's going to load each student's information out there on the right. Um, so if I grab uh, Cody here, we can see their information. We can go through and see if they're part of special service groups. So this one's a nursing and women's basketball team, referral sources from a faculty member. Why are we seeing them? They're at risk and income level. Uh, we can actually look at the history from this student, what has been done with them in the past. Oops, that opens in a different window. Give me a second. So that automatically popped up, and I can immediately see what was done with this student and who did it over time. I can see any action plans that have been completed, if the items are uh, completed or not, uh, the challenge and the next steps, so that I can say, okay, let's talk, uh, Luca, let's, let's sit down and see what's going on here, and I see that you had a transportation challenge, did you get this done? And so I've been able to pick up right away from another coach's uh, uh, plan and, and immediately assist this student with have, without having to have them tell me their whole life story again or at, without working at cross purposes to that other coach. There is a whole student intake process which allows us to collect a lot of data from these students that you don't typically get in a student information system. Um, we're going to get things about their educational plans, uh, their demographics, uh, things like, you know, do you have children? Are you a primary caregiver? And if you are, how many children do you have? Do you need daycare? And if you need daycare, uh, do you have any arrangements made? Now, all of this stuff is configurable, so if you have different daycare arrangements, you can populate each one of these drop-downs differently through the administrative interface or through uh, like educational levels. If you don't like the ones we've pre-populated, you're welcome to uh, add or change them at your need. You can also discuss their educational goals. We're going to have some more things in here on career services and occupation. Funding, this is a huge challenge for our students, and this helps us start conversations like, oh, I see that you're going to have an employer help you fund. Do we need to do any special paperwork now to make sure you get reimbursed? And how's that going to work with your financial aid, et cetera? And then we're asking the students to fill out their own challenges. And you can, again, completely configure this. And this is the low-hanging fruit. This is the stuff they'll tell you about that you can immediately be prepared to help them address. Sometimes, too, students will be more apt to check something off when somebody's not asking the direct question, particularly around things like housing or shelter. If you're homeless, um, that's a real barrier to being successful in college. But the fact that your parents kicked you out and you don't have a place to stay is really going to impact your ability to do math. Um, and so we need to address that. We can look at the action plan for this student. So here we are. We can see that uh, test anxiety, transportation, and that there is a uh, job program through DayVest that we're going to help the student with. And if we wanted to create an action plan item, we just simply come in. And we can have different action plans uh, or counseling reference guides. So we could have one just for the West Campus, one for the North Campus, one for the First Year Advising Center, ones that are specific to intake, housing, whatever it might be. And within those, we can identify all the challenges that we think students might face. So let's say test anxiety. So if we open that up, we can see that here are all the pre-populated. And if I select, say, Study Skills website, you can see that it automatically populates all that data into the uh, field so that the coach doesn't have to do this by hand. Um, we don't really want them spending all this time doing it. However, we're not trying to put them in a shoebox. So they can come down here and say, you know, talk to Bill. You know, if they have a personal relationship, they can still leverage that. Or go on Tuesdays, the lines are short. There is also the ability to make sure that this specific item is individually uh, secured for confidentiality. So if this is an item that only a disability coach or only a counseling services coach can see, then we can mark it that way or that everyone in the system can see. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone in the system, not everyone in the college or in the public. Um, and then we can also set an expectation. I'd really like you to have this done by the time we meet next Thursday. And then we can save that off and make it part of their plan. The journal entry process is very similar. We can come in and say add. And then we can select that confidentiality level. And say, OK, this is going to be so that everyone can see it. And it's come from, you know, you, this is, again, all configurable. So if you wanted to put, I saw them on the golf course, like a sales system would, you could have that. But mostly these are going to come from appointments, saw them in the hall, email, email from a faculty member, email from a, another coach, email from their uh, basketball coach, et cetera. So we could say, OK, this came from an appointment. 
we can type in a comment, you know, you know, doing great. We can look at our journal tracks and sessions. This is what we get into that we call speed notes. So we've got all these items, and these are different processes on the campus so that these different offices can very quickly make notes. And we could say, all right, this is a housing concern. Here are the items that we can quickly say, all right, we went over the housing move-in checklist and the contract and the roommate agreement. And we're going to go ahead and save that. And we can see really quickly that we've added those items. And as I save that to their record for the journal entry, that is now there. And when we look at their history in the profile, you would see that as a new item. So we come in and we print their profile off. Again, in the wrong window. All right. So we can see that we've uh, added housing, housing contract, roommate agreement, move-in checklist, and doing great. So the next person to interact with the student will have access to that information just that quick. All right. To send an early alert, so we're going to go over to the early alert interface. You can see here that it, it's got my course rosters listed in this little drop-down box. And I can look at all my different classes. And I can say, all right, let's look at uh, remedial uh, composition. And I can say, all right, here's Savannah. And as I select Savannah, it's going to come up. If I've already got a coach, it will tell me who the coach is. We're trying to connect the faculty and the support resources together. If a coach isn't present, it means that we're going to send this to an early alert coordinator, and you can define that by campus or process or, or referral reason uh, so that it automatically routes to the right team. So, for example, if we put in, for example, uh, academic excessive absences, it could automatically go to the attendance squad. And they would be the ones to get the notification and track the student down if attendance is a problem or if you've got a special team for that. Or it would go to the student's assigned coach. So then the faculty member can make suggestions. Again, these are completely configurable. You determine what they are. And we can say, well, I really want them to uh, see the advisor and potentially withdraw because at this point they've missed so many classes that they cannot be successful in the course. Or we could say, you know, this is an academic concern. And I really want them to go to tutoring or the, and specifically the writing center. Right? So we can send that early alert. Now, when we send it, <clears throat> we can say, do you want to send a copy of this to the student? In that case, I said, yes. Go ahead and let Savannah know. And we found that from a best practice standpoint, it's great to raise the issue of an early alert early. Put it in your syllabus. Let students know that it's not punitive, that it's there to support them and that it's not big brother. So that when they get a call from a support service that they're not like, oh my gosh, how did you know I was struggling in, in reading? That they say, you know, no, this is really about us trying to help you and assist you. And most students are, are really pleased that somebody cares enough to call them and try to help them out. So back in the coach interface, I can now see that for a student that has a early alert, I can see that an early alert was sent, and I get some information on the details of that alert. Oops. Where it came from, this one's from North Campus. It was for low test scores. And I think Sally should visit the tutoring center ASAP, and that they've recommended that. Now, they can then send feedback and let uh, folks know so they can say, respond to the selected early alert. So we, we don't want your coaches to have to spend a lot of time writing emails to create that feedback loop to your faculty members. So they can come in and say, okay, what was the outcome? And again, this is all configurable. You can say, well, the outcome is um, we're you know, providing services to the student. We did the outreach via a phone call, you know, working with them, whatever it might be, and they're going to the tutoring center. Now, this is a balancing act between your coaches and your faculty. We obviously don't want to communicate things that are sensitive or student privacy issues, but we certainly can still have a communication and a dialogue with our faculty member to let them know we are providing services to that student without violating the student's uh, privacy. And then we have the opportunity to go into the reporting interface and report back out on the, the general student information, caseload reports, uh, the reference guide, confidentiality agreements, activity, uh, the specific counselor caseload management, what are my students doing, and anybody by a special service group. 
that we've identified. So at any point, you could tag a student as being in part of a special service group. We would just select a student and we can edit them. And we could set an appointment time. And we could say, okay, this student is part of nursing and basketball, but is also part of, say, student activities. And now we can track this student by that metric. And so this is non-exclusive, so a whole bunch of different groups can use these uh, service groups and then be able to report off of them later. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope you found it valuable.